Hello, viewers. This is Pastor Soji Francis. I'm very excited to bring the message of the gospel into your house. I come into your house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name that is above every other name. Now, I have a powerful message today, my God, of which I title uh, the blood that elevates you, the blood of Jesus that elevates you, my God. Um, this message is very important in this hour. As a matter of fact, we just left off uh, our Easter period and uh, we understand that Jesus Christ had paid the price. And I want to teach today on the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that leads to your elevation. Hallelujah. And I'm taking my text today from the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all men have sinned. As a result of one man's sin, we were told in the Bible that death was passed on to mankind. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word. I bless your word. I release myself into the power of your word. The flower withered, the grass faded, the word of God abide forever. I release myself under the integrity of the word of God in the name of Jesus. I speak and I plead the blood of Jesus into the atmosphere, into everyone washing me around the, around the world. I pray that the blood of Jesus Christ will speak for you in the name of Jesus. I bring the speaking of the blood of Jesus Christ into the atmosphere, into the airwave, into every opposition and hindrances. And I pray that the word of God will prevail in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <clears throat> Today, I have to quickly go into teaching of this word and I believe that everyone under the sound of my voice will have a basic understanding of the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, uh, I want to teach you about that blood and uh, I want to tell you what the blood is not about. <clears throat> the blood is not about all of the bloodshed going on around the world. It's not about killing people. It's not about terrorism. It's not about ritual, you know, killing people for ritual. That is not the kind of bloodshed we are talking about. Those blood that were shed, they, they lead to some kind of enmity and fight and, and hatred. And that is not that one we are talking about. I want to preach to you today about the precious, precious blood of Jesus Christ, the one that is pure, that is holy. My God, the, 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 the power in the blood that cleanses us, that delivers us, that reconciles us back to God so that God can look on us and be very pleased. Hallelujah. That is the message I want to preach to you today. And I know that the message of the blood had been abused in the past. People have actually, you know, taken into killing human beings and doing ritual. Even those who are looking for money, those who are looking for some kind of demonic intermediaries to fast forward their business. Some, some people ministry, some people, whatever it is that they are looking for, people have resorted into killing, you know, by shedding blood to, to, to achieve their diabolic means. But I want to tell you today about the blood of Jesus Christ. Is the blood that was shed. A peaceful blood, my God, that was shed for you and I so that we can have access to the throne room of grace. So that we can please God. So that we can be protected. So that we can be saved. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus Christ redeem us even from generational cause that everybody is preaching about when you give your life to Christ today and you, are, and you made him to be Lord over your life. You will be catapulted and translated into the kingdom. You are born into the kingdom. Then you have a different lineage that hasn't got any contamination or causes in it. Hallelujah. But let me take you to a little bit of foundation in the next 10 minutes. We are going to go on a break and then we are coming back and we are going to pray. 
I want to take you to where does this happen or began. It happens in the Garden of Eden. We know the story that in the beginning, the Bible says God created, you know, Adam and Eve and put them in the garden. Just the third chapter, they mess everything up. The devil deceived them, number one, as a result of the lust of the eye, of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And these are all of the issues that are still happening in our world that we have not really able to really understand that some of the things going on now, why people are killing themselves, is as a result of the lust of the flesh, the, the, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's still the same. The devil is still attacking people with this same principle, with this same trick. And I want everyone under the sound of my voice to, to, to change the way you do things this time and, and begin to respond to the word of God that I'm about to deliver to you today. Now, in, in Genesis chapter 3, we, we saw how uh, they committed the sin, they committed three sin, and they mortgaged the whole earth to the devil as a result of these three sins, which is still, you know, uh, you know pervading the whole earth at the moment. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says something there. And uh, let me just read it. The Bible says, let me read it. Let me read it from verse 14. As a result of the fact that the devil tricked them into sin and uh, Adam obey plus Eve, now God releases certain causes. And I want to read that because that will form the foundation of my teaching today. Now in verse 14, and the Lord said unto serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon the belly shall thou go, and dust that thou eat all the days of thy life. In other words, he will be subjected to eating the dust. And what is dust? Dust is a form of flesh, body. And any time when we sin, then we are empowering the devil. We are feeding the serpent and the devil any time when we commit sin. We give the devil permission to eat because we are made from the dust. And the dust is what Satan eats when we sin against God. And let me go on. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed, between the seed and her seed, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. We all understand that the woman hasn't got a seed, it is the man that gave the seed for the woman to fertilize it in their egg. And what does that impl uh, you know, imply? It implies that none of the seed of mankind can give birth to what will deliver us. Hallelujah. That is why in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 34 and 35, that is the, that's why God has to visit Mary. God, by his own conception, has to overshadow Mary and what she gave birth to become the son of God. Because the blood of Adam and his seed had been contaminated. But somebody asked me, if the, blood, if the seed of Abraham had been contaminated, what about the woman? Where well, the scientists will tell you that when uh, a baby is in the womb, they don't, they don't, there's no passage of the blood into the, the, the baby. The baby is growing on the seed that was seeded in her. And that seed is the seed of God. And then she grew there, came out with no attachment with the blood of the woman. So that he can deliver us from every other sin that mankind has actually entered into. Now that form a little bit of foundation of what really happened. So when Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, when they ate the forbidden fruit of good and evil, which is an indicative of the fact that there's no good thing you can do or evil you can do that you can ever please God, no matter how good you are. The, the, the tree of evil and good, it cannot please God. 
no matter how good you are, we have been disconnected from God as a result of the sin. And because of that, a new blood has to be shed. So God has to make the first time in the Bible, God has to shed the blood. God is the first to shed the blood, not Cain. Now, he shed the blood of the animal and he clothed them in verse 21. And he made that sacrifice so that their sin can be atoned for or covered. So there's a difference between atonement and, and remissions of sin. When Christ came, he remit the sin by taking it away. But atonement covers them up until Jesus comes. And that is why in the old dispensation, they have to be covering up the sin. Every yearly sacrifice is to cover the sin. But when Christ came, once and for all, he paid the price for the remission of our sin. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says the, the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the, de of, the, of the seed of the devil and the devil's seed will touch the hill. My God. What does that indicate? That's an indicative of the fact that when the child Christ Jesus is born and crucified, he will bruise the head of the devil. Even while you are listening to me, wherever you are in the surface of the earth, when you are born again, whatever things that you gave birth to has the propensity to bruise the head of the devil. Somebody say amen there. The vision that you have, my God, the business that you have, whatever came out of you has the propensity to bruise the head of the devil. Hallelujah. Because you are born again, born of the incorruptible seed. So whatever it is that came out of you has the power and capability to destroy the works of the devil. Now the devil said the seed will bruise your heel, which means that it, it, it can make you go through pains in childbearing or Sometimes you that has got a vision, my God, the devil might be attacking your marriage, attacking your job, attacking all kinds of causing, you know, pains and all kinds of things in your life. Those are the touching of the hill. But hallelujah, what when you give your life to Christ, my God, when authority is transferred back, when you are restored back, my God, you have what it takes to mentally destroy the devil all of the time in the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. My God. Some of you today, you'll be thanking God for the house that you got. I know a whole lot of people can develop the ministry of thanksgiving. That is very good. You can testify. That is very good. The big testimony that is so powerful is when we thank the Lord and testify the blood of Jesus Christ. My God. My God. The Bible says we overcame the devil by the word or by the blood of Jesus and by the word of our testimony. Our testimony in the place of thanksgiving, my God, destroy the devil. If there is any testimony you want to give, it's a testimony about the power of God. Hallelujah. When you plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your life, my God, it cannot be corrupted. Whatever you are giving testimony to can be corrected. Cor corrupted. I saw a whole lot of repossession. I saw all kinds of things going on with people, people giving testimony of the material world. But when you give testimony about the blood of Jesus Christ, it stays forever. It is eternal. It's capable of delivering you all the time. My God, when you testify of the powers of the blood of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. There are three things that bear witness in heaven. The Bible says, the water, the blood, and the spirit. And these are the three things that bear witness. And how do they bear witness? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, it said, You have been washed by the washing of the word of God. My God, through the word of God, you have been washed by the water of the word through the word of God. Now, what he's saying is that the Bible says that there are three things that bear witness in heaven, which taught me to tell you that the flesh of Jesus Christ is the, is the word. And the blood, hallelujah, is what, when it is infused into the flesh, it became a living soul. The Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, verse 11, the Bible says the life of every flesh is in the blood. 
and the Holy Spirit bear witness to the world through the blood of Jesus Christ. This treating bear witness, it helps you in your warfare. It helps you to overcome the devil when you have the blood in your message, the blood in your prayer. These days, a message without the blood, my God has no power. Because heaven will not bear witness to a message that hasn't got the blood in it. The blood content must be there. Hallelujah. It is the blood that delivers you, that gives you power to overcome the powers of the devil. Hallelujah. In the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 12, the Bible says, He is the one that said that, the angels of death will be passing in the middle of the night. But when he sees the blood, he will pass over. What does that imply? Hallelujah. Now, what happened is that the children of, you know, uh, Israelite have been in bondage for almost 430 years and they are about to come out. Moses performed all kinds of miracles. Nothing worked. The blood became the last card, my God, that delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh. Now, there is a different way. We say pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. We are not saying you should beg for the blood of Jesus Christ. Pleading the blood of Jesus Christ is applying the blood of Jesus Christ. He said they should apply the blood in the two posts or linter of their house. When the angels of death is coming, it will pass over. So the blood is of no power unless it is applied. Unless you plead the blood, it's of no power. I came to challenge you today that in your waking hour, when you rise up, you begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ against the plans of the devil. My God, the Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ was sprinkled over everything, both the outer court, inner court, and the holy of holy. And the Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ was laid upon their head, even to their toll. The blood of Jesus Christ was speaking on everything. So what does that imply? When you, when you plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your children, over your bank account, over your relationship, over your partner, over your business, over your church, over the members of your church, when you continually plead in the blood of Jesus Christ, the angels of death will pass over. Sickness will pass over. Opposition will give way in the name of Jesus. I challenge you that when you plead the blood of Jesus, my God, the devil cannot stand it. I come to let you know that the power of the blood of Jesus Christ is so efficacious that it delivers you from any attack from the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I want to let you understand that there are three levels of the blood. There's the blood that can speak. The blood speak. You can, the, God smells the blood too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God sees the blood. And how does this speak? The Bible says the book of Hebrew, chapter 12, verse 24. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ speaketh a better thing than that of Abel. Why? The, the blood of Abel was speaking condemnation, defeat at the grave. The blood of Jesus Christ is speaking a better thing. Is speaking healing, is speaking redemption, is speaking fun, is speaking salvation, is speaking joy, is speaking peace. The blood of Jesus Christ speaketh a better thing than any other spirit or opposition or any wishes and wizard or, or whatever demonic intermediary, whatever it is that they are speaking, the blood speaketh a better thing by changing what they are speaking to a better thing that will better your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ smells. The Bible says he smell when Noah made the sacrifices, he smell it. He smell it like a sweet smelling savour. The blood of Jesus Christ smells. God can smell the blood. I don't know where you want to go. I don't know where you want to hide. When you start pleading the blood, I don't know where they put you. They might put you in the prison of life. They might hide you in a dungeon. When you begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ, God will smell it and God will rescue you wherever you are in Jesus' name. I said, the, God also see the blood. He had the book of you know, left, uh, you know, Exodus that we quoted. Exodus chapter 12 verse 12, the Bible says, when he sees the blood, he pass over. So God can see the blood. When he sees the blood, he pass over. So he can see you wherever you are. 
Hallelujah. You can see you like Elijah was in, he was, was away by himself in the bush. God can see him and he sent a ravenous animal to feed him. When you plead the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not be lack. God will visit you wherever you are, wherever you are locked away. God will, che will, will, will trace you wherever you are when you begin to plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Pleading the blood, I said, is not begging. It's applying it. When you plead it, you say you are applying the blood. You are covering yourself with the blood. You are covering your home with the blood. You are covering your back account with the blood. My God, the devil dare not over, you know, step over or descend on anything that you pleaded the blood upon. Hallelujah. I believe that you are listening to me, born to conquer. This message was meant to, to, to revolutionize you, to, to change your perspective as to how you see the blood. My God, by one man, sin entered the world, and by one man also, life, power of resurrection, entered into the world. My God. So when you give your life to Christ, you pass into this resurrection life. He has come to give you life and give you more abundantly. Abundant life is embedded in the blood. Hallelujah. I'm going to go on a break. When, when, when I come back, when I come back, we are going to pray. We are going to deal with certain things, different areas that God shed his blood and how it is applied to us and how we are going to pray today. I believe if you tune in, if you don't go and stay there, when I come back, my God, I'm going to tell you the seven areas that Jesus Christ shed his blood. And all of those areas are what you need in your life to be totally free and deliver from the hands of the enemy. I'll be right back. God bless you. Hallelujah. You are welcome back to Bound to Conquer. I want you to call your friends. Call your neighbors. Let them listen to this message. It will be powerfully revolutionize the way you see the blood and how you can apply them, apply it over your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me just quickly establish something that doesn't work. Now, when Adam sinned, he wants to use other things to cover himself. We call it fig leaves. Fig leaves cannot cover anybody. I don't know what you are doing, what you want to do in your life. What is fig leaf? Fig leaf is man idea to reach God. Is man idea to succeed? Is man idea to think that they can wash themselves clean so that God can, can, can overlook their sin? No, fig leaf never works. Fig leaves is what people use. Demonic intermediaries. Some people today, they have not actually entered into all court, entered into all kinds of things because they cannot come through the blood. Jesus Christ caused the fig leaves when he was journeyed to Jerusalem. He said, nobody eat from you anymore. It's, it's a man-made religious spirit that cannot reach God. So it was caused. Many people don't understand why he caused he caused it because religion is cause. All those law can no longer be the way we can reach God anymore. Jesus Christ, when he came on his way to Jerusalem, my God, to be crucified, he caused the fig leaf. The fig leaf Adam used to want to cover himself. So many people are using all kinds of things in the church as a, as a method of deliverance that cannot deliver nobody. It's, it's a man-made kind of deliverance, man-made miracle. It's still man-made. If it is not mixed with the blood of Jesus Christ, it's still a man-made. I don't care who is washing your head. I don't care how many water you drink. I don't care how many soap they use in bathing you. I don't care whether you go to the running water to bath yourself. My God, I don't care how many brooms and how many blocks and how many, how many sand you bring to the church. All of that are fig leaf. They cannot deliver nobody. They are still work of the flesh. It cannot deliver until you change, my God, your ways. And, and, go, and, and go into God's way. God presented his son, his blood. Today, people are killing themselves to make money, ritual, and all kinds of things. People are killing people even to grow some kind of 
religious cycle. I won't call it church because church is church. Church is holy. Church is a powerful place. Church is the gate to heaven. My God. But some people do their own secret court and, 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 and come around to want to use fig leaf. Fig leaf will never work. That is why I cannot stand people that don't respect the blood. The blood of Jesus is the only antidote. The last straw that breaks the camel's back is the one that mortally destroys the devil. So whichever man made you brought to the church, you need to change your mind because the message of the blood of the, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ must be mixed with the blood. My God, if it is not mixed with the blood, it is not powerful and it's not going to bring deliverance and healing. My God, the Bible says three things bear witness. I said it, that the water, the blood, and the spirit, all of these combinations open heaven, my God. It, it will work wonders, my God. The blood of Jesus Christ is a working wonder. When it is means, my God, with, when, the, when it is means with the flesh, the blood, and the Holy Ghost, when the both of them come together in the name of Jesus Christ, heavens will be open. I want to relate to you seven areas that Jesus Christ shed his blood, hallelujah, the answer for mankind misery. My God, today I want to unfold all of the areas, the, 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 the symbols, what it means where Jesus Christ shed his blood. What, you know, he conquered for you for doing that. The first place where Jesus Christ shed his blood is by circumcision. The Bible says, at the eight days, he was brought to the temple. In the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 21. There, the blood was shed. Why? Paul gave a revelation as to that circumcision in Galatians chapter 5, verse 3. He said, I testify that anyone circumcised is a debtor to the whole law. In other words, Jesus Christ did not come to change the law, he came to fulfill it. When he came to fulfill the law, he has to go through the law. So at the age of eight, he had to be circumcised. So he met the first qualification of meeting the law because he said, I have not come, hallelujah, to destroy the law or prophet. But I have come to fulfill them. In his fulfillment, as a Jewish son, he needed to be circumcised. That's the first place where he shed his blood. To meet with all the law that were contradictory against us. The second place that he shed his blood is on the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you ever notice that in the, on, the, in the, um, on the garden, in the times of Adam, that's where he lost it. Also in the garden, in the new dispensation, the, the second Adam, he also regained it and restored it on the same garden too. What does that indicate? Jesus Christ was dealing with his will. He was dealing with his willpower. The power of hell was against him. He was going through some kind of agonizing pains because there was a struggle. So at the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible said he prayed to the point that, my God, in Luke chapter 22, verse 44, the sweat turned into blood. My God, what does that indicate? That indicates that all the stress, all the fear, and all the insanities and all of the panic attack and the, you know, mental health issue that people are going through right on the Garden of Gethsemane, he paid the price there. He subordinated his will to the will of God so that, so that we will not have to struggle to make a choice as to whether we have to follow Christ or not. Well, when we are in Christ, our will will be submerged or subordinated to the will of God. Hallelujah. We'll be able to serve God willingly and by choice. Somebody say, man, the third place where he shed his blood, he, his, his back was beaten at the weeping post. The Bible said they beat him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, by his stripes, we were healed in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. So the weeping post 
is your healing post. In other words, any sickness or disease that can ever assail any mankind, my God, that 39 stripes upon, the, upon Jesus is more than 39, but what, in the, what, what it indicates according to the interpretations of those who are exegizing the Bible, they said that stripes, you know, answer for any kind of disease or sickness that can ever assail mankind. So at the weeping post, my God, was the healing post to everyone because by his stripes, we were healed. Hallelujah. The fourth one, his head bore a crown of thorns. They put a thorns, a crown of thorns on his head. Hallelujah. That bring out about blood flowing. And you know the cause over Adam. He said he will sweat to make it. Hallelujah. The Bible made us to understand in the cause that thorn and tissue shall you bring forth. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 and 19, that's when God caused Adam. Hallelujah. He said he's going to eat from the sweat of his face. Hallelujah. So the second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, he became poor for us to be rich. So that all of those struggles will be over. Some people who are having migraine headache, people who are having pains in their head, at the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ, from the, from the crown, from the brow, my God, it brought a by healing of anything that can ever happen to your head. At that insanity of pain or pan paranoid or panic attack or, 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 or whatever it is that you are going through, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ on his brow brought about healing and sadness to everyone because you gave your life to Christ. After all, whatever affects the body affects the head. Whatever happens to you happens to him. So on the basis of that shedding of blood, my God, it purges us and cleanses us from all headache and pains and all poverty in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I just, number, number, because we are going to pray, number five. His hands was nailed to the cross. Hands is associated with impartation and the transmission. Impartation and transmission. That is the hands of healing, hands of power. Jacob called his children. He laid hands on them and impart blessing. Paul said he brought those people that he might impart spiritual gift unto them. So when we are talking about hands, we are talking about empowering hands that impart life and transfer blessing into whoever you stretch your hands. It's a hands of blessing. Hallelujah. The last, this number six, his feet was nailed to the cross. What does that indicate? He restored back to us dominion. The Bible said we will step over scorpion, over serpent, and over the paths of the devil. Nothing will by enemies bite your toes. My God, the blood of Jesus Christ paid for your dominion right. You remember the book of Joshua chapter 10. The Bible said whatever the soul of your fish are tread on is given unto you as a possession, which means that you have the power to dominate. So that is why Joshua called all of those kings that he captured. He put his feet on their neck. Hallelujah. As a proof of his dominion right over them. So wherever you enter, wherever you go, you have the power of dominion over the paths of the devil. The last one, hallelujah, is that his side was pierced. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38, it said, those of you that are tossed, they should come unto him. Because out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. It is from this place that water gush out. Because they pierce his side. Because he came to give life. Hallelujah. Water came out. Have you ever seen a breaking water when you're about to give birth to a new thing? When a, when a woman who's fully ready to deliver his baby and the water break. 
He brought about a new life. My God. So when you gave your life to Christ today, so these seven things will happen to you. My God. Hallelujah. The Lord that you cannot fulfill by yourself will be replaced by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your will that you cannot handle this time, you have the power to overcome every perplexity and every stress of life. The Bible said the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. The peace of God will come to garrison your heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm preaching to you on Born to Conquer and I believe that God is blessing you, that God is terminating all of these struggles out of your life because of the crown. He's giving you empowering power. With this hand, this hand can handle as many money. He can handle there could be a transfer in the name of Jesus. Transfer. The Bible said the wealth of Gentiles shall be transferred. You receive it with these hands. Hallelujah. I believe that God has spoken to us by his word today. I know for sure that every one of you listening to me today, you are a child of God or you have not given your life to Christ. When you gave your life to Christ, you automatically come under these blessings. And it begins to work for you. Hallelujah. When you speak, heaven we hear because you have given your life to Christ. My God, the word, the blood, and the Holy Ghost is in your life. You become a touch not entity that when you speak, heaven honors your word. My God, I, I want to give a testimony sometimes ago. Thank God I went to a Bible believing church that preached the word. Hallelujah. When I gave my life to God, to Christ, when I totally surrendered my life in 1993, December, in this place, we were taught on how to plead the blood, how to apply the blood. One day I was praying that prayer. I was praying that prayer. Suddenly in the middle of the night, my God, I saw a wish fly because in those days I used to be oppressed. I go through all kinds of attack. So when this, this spirit was coming, it was about to land in the living room, my God, of my grandpa. And I saw the blood of this guy just spread over the whole floor. And that spirit flew back. It never had to land into my house. There are all kinds of testimony I can give about the powers of the blood of Jesus Christ working in my life. My God, because when you, a sister came to me this, this week, my God, she analyzed all of the things that she was going through, the battle that she faced. My God, he said the demon follows her everywhere, even to her place of work, anywhere she go, they're always driving her back. Even she went to some churches when she narrated her story as to how the devil attacked, harassed, how he, she stood, how the devil stood in her face and all of that. The pastor have to allow her to, to be free to go. My God, this lady was giving and analyzing what the devil was doing and all of that. I said, well, enough of that. I don't have to tell you to go and fast. I don't have to tell you to, 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 to do any kind of spiritual gyration. Just go in there. Let me pray for you. My God, I pray by the pass of the blood. I plead the blood. I, I go into every foundational issues and I break things in the realms of the spirit. I could not, no matter how you talk to me about the devil, I refuse to be afraid of the devil because when I was there, you could not do anything. Not now that I'm safe. Not now that I'm blood washed and bought breath. Hallelujah. The devil is in trouble because of you. Because you know about the past of the blood. So the woman came yesterday to give a testimony. My God, he said, for the first time in her life, she was able to sleep. She was not being oppressed. All those cranking noises that the devil is coming to speak into her ears every day. He said, most of the prophets are always be telling her to go and do this. Some of them said they should buy clothes to go and dash the wood. The, the somebody who is doing it in the village. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Fig leaf cannot deliver. It is the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that deliver. When you plead the blood and apply the blood, the devil can not stand the blood. Hallelujah. It doesn't take too much to plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I can give you as many testimony as I can give of the power of the blood of Jesus Christ working in the life of people. He says, some minister said, look, uh, your, the demon that is affecting your background is too much. We cannot deal with it. My God, it is not my by might, it's not by power, but I believe in the efficacious power of the blood of Jesus Christ that when you begin to plead the blood, my God, and apply the blood, the devil will have to pass over. I see sickness pass over your life. I see wishes and wizards pass.
pass over your life. Your life will not be a landing point to any witches and wizards. The rod of wickedness will not rest upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. My God, when you plead the blood, the devil recognizes it. And because of the working of the power of the blood, I have learned even right now by different revelation that even my back account must be secure by applying the blood of Jesus Christ. My God, my children are named them one by one and apply the blood. I apply the blood over my wife, over anything that is connected to me by birth, by, by, by covenant, hallelujah, and by relationship. Whatever is connected to me, I cover them with the blood so that the devil doesn't use one devil somewhere to come and assess my life. My God, hallelujah. I'm going to go on a break. When I come back, I'm going to pray with you. You have to call your friends because this is going to be powerful. It's not going to be as usual. The anointing to pray is upon my life. I will write back in Jesus' name. God bless you. You are welcome back to Born to Conquer. This is the moment of prayer. The moment that I love the most. This one, we know that the blood of Jesus Christ is the last card that disrupts Pharaoh, that will not let you go. That same blood has put you over, giving you dominion to, to step over the neck of your enemy. My God, impartation come into your life by the reasons of the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to text your prayer request onto my mobile phone uh, so that I can call to pray with you later. Hallelujah. Text your prayer request to my mobile phone because the studio line will not be open today because we are going to pray. Hallelujah. How many of you ready to pray with me? I don't know what you are going through, but I know the blood of Jesus Christ works. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know how much money you are giving to some fake. Uh, those people who are just still in the, in, in the lust of the, of the flesh and the proud of life, who are taking your money to enhance themselves into their belly. I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus Christ is so efficacious, so powerful. When you start pleading it, you don't need another one. Somebody say amen there. You just need a Bible-believing church that gives you revelation because revelation is what, my God, is what decides your ranking in the realms of the Spirit. When you have the revelations of the blood of Jesus Christ, my God, you, it gives you a higher rank in the realms of the Spirit to rebuke certain things. And that is what I have done so far. We are going to pray. I'm going to pray today. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, He said, when the angels of death was coming, God was the one that sent it. And also pay respect to his own blood. Hallelujah. He paid respect to his own blood. God is the one that created the devil and everything that is living. So if you are going through any kinds of attack, and if you, if you do not respect the blood, if you do not respect the blood, I don't know how God is going to help you. Because, you see... The Israelites, they have to put the blood there. If they don't put it there, I don't know. The angels of death will not respect whoever that does not apply the blood. You have to be obedient. Hallelujah. Today, I bring you under the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover everyone that are washing me around the globe by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. I bring the speaking because the blood can speak. And he's speaking a better thing. I bring the speaking of the blood of Jesus Christ over your life and over your destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that is affecting your body, sickness and disease, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. Therefore, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over that sickness and that disease oh, that is going on in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My God, the blood of Jesus Christ can neutralize every poison. You remember, hallelujah, the book of 2 King. Hallelujah. 2 King chapter 4, verse 38, about the death in the pot. The Bible says, and all, uh, you know, you know uh, what's his name? The Bible says, and Elisha prepared the meal and put it in the pottage that was poisoned. When you drink the blood and you take communion and we plead the blood of Jesus Christ, it purges, purges away everything in your system and neutralizes every poison. But the reason of the part of the blood of Jesus Christ, I command every poison in your mind, in your head, physically, spiritually, you know, emotionally, I command it to be neutralized in the name of Jesus. My God, some of you today, 
you, you have been missing the mark. In fact, they are driving you away wherever you go. You apply for a job. You went for interview. It's not working for you. God has given you, my God, a dominion right when his legs was pierced. When you enter there, you are entering in. Your feet is shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You wear the boot of the spirit. When you enter there, every other thing has to bow. Your employment your status in this land will be submitted wherever you are. My God, God will deliver you from every geographical limitation. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. You are a child of the king. The earth belongs to you so that nobody can refuse you that which belongs to you in the land. So you have power and dominion. Therefore, I cancel every every geographical limitation in your life. I command you to be established in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release your hands, my God, for empowering power to begin to handle money, hallelujah, for imparting wisdom and healing and deliverance. I cover your hands with the blood of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I cover with the blood of Jesus today. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever it is that you are going through, maybe you have been trying and you have struggled all night. My God, you have been sweating to make it because of the blood and the, and the thorn on his head. By the power of that blood upon the head, my God, that wipe away struggles from your face. In the name of Jesus, anything you lay your hands on, it shall prosper. God will bless the work of your hands from this moment onward. The great land that you belong will begin to yield harvest for you. If you are in Great Britain, the land of Great Britain will yield harvest for you. Wherever you are in the surface of the earth, wash me right now because of your dominion right and empowering spirit my God because of the blood of Jesus Christ oh God that is shed for you the land will begin to yield their harvest for you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth my God I pray even at this moment that that which will give birth to the Bible said the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the devil anything you give birth to will bruise the head of the devil it will bruise sickness and disease it will bruise every part of darkness that which you are giving birth to my God, the Bible said his, his body, his side was pierced so that water came out. My God, you will give birth to your own dream, you will give birth to your own vision, you will give birth in the name of Jesus Christ for new things that God has ordained for you from the foundations of the world. Have you not told you in the book of Matthew 27 from 51 that down there about the Bible said, and Jesus Christ gave up the ghost. And suddenly, the blood was split on the ground. Those blood that splattered on the ground. The Bible says, suddenly, my God, the earth was open. The ground was open. And those that were dead began to come out. But the reasons of this blood today, whatever that is dead in your life is coming back alive. It's coming alive in the name of Jesus. Your dream is coming alive. Your vision is coming alive. Your business is coming alive. Whatever it is that is dead in your body, in your cell, and whatever it is, I command the power of resurrection power to quicken your mortal body and quicken your dream back to life in Jesus name I pray whatever it is that you touch from this moment we begin to attract blessing he died so that you can receive my God the Bible says, what is the lamb that was slain to receive power wisdom knowledge honor riches my God wet this wet transfer I release it over your life. My God, the powers of, of wisdom are received by the powers of the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon your life to receive wisdom, to receive power, to receive riches, to receive blessing, to receive honor in the name of Jesus, to receive wisdom. I impart this powerful blood into your life to receive all that Christ died for in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My God, I believe... Every one of you watching me today, I believe that you are blessed. And I believe that God has done wonders in your life. I, will, I want you to respect the blood. When you plead the blood, my God, heaven answers for you. When you preach your message, it must be preached by the blood. Because heavens will answer for you in the name of Jesus. When you lay hands, lay it by the blood. Because heavens will answer for you. Without the blood, my God, there will be no remission of sin. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I want to remind us that on the 23rd of April, there is going to be global concerts of prayer. This is the moment where ministries, 
pastors, bishops, evangelists, and those who love God and the intercessors came together to form a corporate altar before God to push back darkness, to activate blessings from heaven. My God, to release the blessing too, I mean the blood of Jesus Christ into the heavens for the release of your settlement. The title is the hour of settlement. I don't know what you've been going through in your life. I don't know how delayed it was. Some of you now, everybody is consoling you that it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And you are asking, when is it going to be all right? When is it going to be all right? When you come to this gathering, is the hour of settlement. Whatever age-long expectation that you have that had not come to pass yet, when you come to this gathering, there will be settlement. In the name of Jesus, settlement maritally, financially. In the name of Jesus Christ, employment and all areas, your status and everything you are believing, believing God for. Are you believing for a child that will be said to me? Sickness and disease because the blood has been shed. We don't have to struggle over settlement anymore. The price had been paid. Jesus Christ has paid the price for your settlement. Therefore, when you come there in the open heavens of two, three people and thousand people coming together, the heavens will be enlarged. And when we bombard heaven, you shall receive your settlement to the glory of God in Jesus' name. In this particular meeting, I enlisted people who I know and I trust know how to handle prayers. And also people who also know how to take you to the presence of God. My God. Next week, uh, we will be bringing those people and those pictures for you to see. But that is not what is very, very important. When you come there, my God, your life will never be the same. These people will take you right into the presence of God. This week also, Sunday, I want to invite you to our Sunday service, a glorious Sunday. And everyone that has been coming has always been testifying of the power of God. No gimmick. It is, it is the word of God. You need the word of God. When the word of God is properly applied, learn it upon learn it, precept upon precept, mixed with the blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will bear witness to the word by the pass of the blood, and there will be miracle. Hallelujah. There will be, you will not be denied. You will not be delayed. You will not be declined when you come in the name of Jesus. I want to also, uh, the, the service is, is from 1215 to 215 at number 1C Woolish Knee Road. Hallelujah. It's just one minute walk from Woolish Arsenal Station. There's no reason why you cannot come because it's very accessible. Now, I want to remind you also that this Friday is our night vigil. We call it the Night of Settlements. I don't know what you are believing God for, but I want you to come. We are starting from 10 p.m. to 3 p.m. I want you to come. The intercessors and powerful intercessors, they are coming to agree together for your night of settlement. Hallelujah. I want to also uh, enjoin everyone watching me to support Global Concerts of Prayer so that we'll be coming on air every week. Hallelujah. We need for you to support us to carry the gospel to the uttermost part of the earth by giving your substance. I want you to also, as you are watching me, be prayerful. Be praying for me as I'm praying for you. Go into our website, log in, and log yourself into another people who are an intercessor, who are interceding. Join them together and form a prayer movement so that we can be a prayer cover for our world. Hallelujah. So that our world will be a place of peace. It's good to talk it, to preaching to you today. I'm Pastor Soji Francis. I'll see you next week, Thursday, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. God bless you.